Five Missing People That Turned Up Alive, Part 1. Number 1. Gabriel Nagy. In Australia, on January 21st, 1987, Gabriel Nagy called his wife from work and told her that he was coming home for lunch. Unfortunately, this was the last time she would ever hear from him. Gabriel's burnt-out car was discovered on the side of the road the following day, and two weeks later, money was withdrawn from his bank account in order to purchase camping supplies. Following this final transaction, Gabriel vanished without a trace. In 2010, a full 23 years later, Gabriel Nagy's name appeared on a newly applied for Medicare card, and a police detective who had never given up on the search for him picked up on it. This occurred two weeks before an inquest that would have declared him dead. Upon being found, Nagy revealed that his earliest memory was of bleeding profusely from the head and that he had no recollection of who he was. Over the two decades that he was missing, he had given himself a new name, worked odd jobs, and turned to alcoholism before being taken into work as a church caretaker. Nagy applied for the Medicare card to treat a cataract at around the same time that flashes of his real name began to return to him. Ultimately, Nagy said he was relieved that he hadn't been responsible for any crimes, as he always felt he was on the run from something, and was happy to be reunited with his family after two decades. Through photographs and talks with his family, Nagy has been able to regain large parts of his memory. Number 2. Brenda Heist Mother of two, Brenda Heist, went missing in 2002 after dropping her children off at school. At the time, Heist had been going through a divorce and had just been denied housing assistance. Her husband reported her disappearance after their children came home to an empty house, but in the years that followed, she wasn't found. Heist was declared legally dead in 2010. Unbelievably, in 2013, 11 years after she went missing, Heist resurfaced after going to the police with her story and revealing that she was a missing person. She explained that on the day she disappeared, she was feeling upset and unsure of how she would be able to support her children, and proceeded to cry on a bench at a Pennsylvania park. She was then approached by three homeless hitchhikers, who comforted her and encouraged her to go traveling with them. She decided to take the opportunity to start a new life and believed that her children would be better off without her. Heist traveled to Florida where she found herself a new group of friends and had stolen and assumed at least three different identities, one of which she stole while working as a housekeeper. She had spent some of her missing decade begging on the streets and living the homeless life and also spent some time in jail for drug possession. Heist was sentenced to one year in jail for violating the terms of her probation after she was caught using someone else's ID during a traffic stop. While Heist's former husband says he forgives her for abandoning the family, her children have turned her away and refused to have anything to do with her. Number 3. Natasha Kampusch In Austria on March 2, 1998, 10-year-old Natasha Kampusch was kidnapped by Wolfgang Priklopil while on her way to school. She was missing for a total of eight years. While in captivity, Natasha was kept in a windowless, soundproof cellar in her kidnapper's home and was beaten and starved in order to prevent her from escaping. She was also raped repeatedly by her abductor. Priklopil warned her that there were explosives in the house's doors and windows, and that he had a gun at hand at all times ready to kill her if necessary. However, as time passed, she was given more and more freedom by her kidnapper, and was eventually allowed to spend time in the rest of the house and go outside. She was even taken on a skiing trip by Priklopil, who throughout the period of her captivity also gave her books, newspapers, and a radio that allowed her to educate herself and develop mentally. Natasha Kampusch emerged back into the public eye on August 23, 2006, when she managed to escape from her captor while she was vacuuming his car and he had to take a phone call away from the noise. Seeing her opportunity, she made a run for it and was able to convince a neighbor to call the police. Since turning up alive, Natasha has inspired multiple books, one of which she has written, and a movie. On the day Natasha escaped, Wolfgang Priklopil managed to evade police and took his own life by stepping in front of a moving train near Vienna Northern Station. Natasha now owns the house that she was previously held captive in. Number 4. John Darwin 
One day in December of 2007, ex-teacher and prison officer John Darwin walked into a London police station and told officers that he believed he was a missing person. Darwin was last seen leaving the home he shared with his wife five years earlier and was spotted on his red kayak in March 2002. Darwin claimed that he had no recollection of anything that had happened to him in the time since he'd gone missing, but appeared to be free from any form of illness. Upon Darwin's initial disappearance, police put in maximum efforts in order to find him, but even the numerous helicopters and boats sent out were unable to uncover any traces of him. Eventually, a paddle which was believed to belong to the kayak was discovered. All hope seemed lost when the wreckage of Darwin's kayak was found in several locations. A year after his disappearance, John Darwin was declared legally dead. His wife, Anne, sold their home and moved to Panama in 2007. It was later revealed that Darwin and his wife had faked his death in order to claim life insurance money, and that he had secretly been living in their home since 2003, using a secret hole behind a wardrobe to move from the family home to a bedsit next door, which they also owned. In 2006, while in Panama, this photo of John and Anne was taken in an estate agent's office, which ended up online and was used as evidence against the couple. Darwin and his wife were both charged with fraud and were ordered to pay back more than half a million pounds and were each sentenced to over six years in prison. Number 5. Charlie Bothwell Father Charles Bothwell IV and stepmother Monique Dillard Bothwell reported their 12-year-old son, Charlie Bothwell, as missing on June 14, 2014. Charlie was last seen at the family home in Detroit and was feared to be dead after not being found for over a week. The case sparked a huge police search and garnered national media attention. Charlie's father even appeared on the Nancy Grace news show 11 days after the initial report to spread word about his missing child. However, during the interview, some information about Charlie's whereabouts came to light, which stopped Charles in his tracks. Getting reports that your son has been found in your basement. Sir? Mr. Bothell, are you, are what? you? Yeah, we are getting reports that your son has been found alive in your basement. What? Yes, that's what, if, if you could hand me that wire very quickly. Yeah, we're getting that right now from, from, yeah. How, how could your son be alive in your basement? Uh, 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 <sighs> I, I have I have no idea. I, 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 now, this yeah. is just a report that we are hearing out of Detroit that we're trying to confirm. Um, oh God, everybody please. in New York, please get on it. Uh, let me know when we get Charlie Langton from WWJ. We've been we've been on the lookout for him. We searched that entire house repeatedly. The FBI searched, the Detroit police searched. We've all searched. As police were serving a search warrant on the house, the 12-year-old boy was found in the basement behind a pile of boxes. Police claim he was very thin when he was found and had marks on his upper body. Charlie explained to police that he was put in the basement by his stepmother as a punishment, and he was too scared to try and escape. It is alleged that both parents physically abused Charlie and made him engage in an extreme exercise regime. In April 2015, both Charles and Monique were charged with torture and second-degree child abuse. The torture charges were later dropped, and during the trial in January 2016, Charles admitted to physically abusing his son with a PVC pipe. He took a plea deal and was sentenced to 18 months of probation and has to participate in anger management classes. He has also lost custody of his son and is not allowed any contact with him. It has not been made public what sentence Monique received. Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for a video, then please leave it in the comments below. Subscribe to see more videos like this.